I started to make decoys because it's what people did. I walked down the street and there'd be somebody making decoys and my, my dad made them, I made them, I saw other people make them. I, I duck hunted and I just thought that's what everybody did. Cut down a telephone pole, cut it in half and make a decoy. I got into it because I wanted to do it, but I didn't know anything. So I started talking to people in the, the carving community and learning. And then I came up to Idaho and met Tom and he has been a insane glossary of knowledge. Pretty much anything he knows he's helped me out with. And it's taken decades off of the learning curve. Each species is unto itself. If you were to look at any of the birds we make and paint them all brown, you should, you should nail the profile and the field markings so that from any distance you could tell that's that species. The style of decoy really changes whether it's a round bottom, whether it's a heavy keeled bird, whether it's wide and flat so it floats well. That flotation is extremely important and we want it to look as lifelike as possible on the water. You've got to do buoyancy tests. If you don't keel the bird right, it's going to float different. You have your diver ducks and puddle ducks. Your diver ducks are going to have their tail closer to the water. Puddle ducks are going to sit a little more breast heavy. Sometimes that, that sculpting process isn't always easy. Uh, it, it's a process to turn uh, that square block of wood into a living sculpture is, uh, can be tough. It can be a tough journey um, and frustrating at times. My end game is to continue to make better birds, spread the knowledge and background about decoy carvers to, to new people. Um, it's where I want to leave my legacy and really uh, help promote the art form, more than anything. Some of my best hunts, I've never pulled a trigger. Mm -hmm.